We're going to jump into a Cleveland Browns trade rumor show in just a moment. But help me grow my Twitter followers, uh, my Twitter base, excuse me, over at Twitter.com. You might have heard of it. Go to at Matthew PD, and if I reach 1,000 Twitter followers by Monday Night Football, I will wear a pumpkin head for our Monday Night Football watch party between Cleveland and Cincinnati. So if you have not followed me on Twitter already and you want another spot to get your Browns fix in, check it out at Matthew PD. That link is in the comments and the description of today's show. What's going on, everyone? Welcome into the Cleveland Browns report. Coming up on today's show, it may be a long shot, but how about some trades that, for once, don't involve players leaving the Browns, but instead coming to the Browns? Chase has been ruled out. Okay, so getting ears right now, right my producer here right now, Jamar Chase. You guys have already know this already, but this is being filmed during our live show every Thursday, so this is like time machine time for you guys right now I'm finding out for the first time right now Jamar Chase ruled out all right let's get back on track though ignore that let's talk about trades players coming to Cleveland here all right trade target number one Duran Payne Washington defensive tackle this has probably been the most popular trade target for the Browns for quite some time honestly like going back into the summer now, Payne is on the last year of his rookie contract, and the Commanders are fielding trade offers. I don't think they're necessarily in a spot where they have to sell, but the Commanders are a horribly run organization, and they love to make bad decisions. And I think trading Deron Payne would be a bad decision, but that's what the Commanders do best here. So my only question is, will Andrew Barry finally accept defeat in this failing project of Taven Bryant and Jordan Elliott at defensive tackle. Here's my pitch, because I know Andrew Barry watches every single episode, no, no doubt about it. A.B., you and me, buddy. If you're planning on drafting a defensive tackle with your second or your third round pick this upcoming draft, skip over that. Trade one of those picks to Washington for proven talent. Let's face it, dude. You have not been good at drafting interior defensive linemen. It's a miss on Elliott, and it's a miss on Togiai. It's too early to say on Winfrey, but let's just call it what it is. Maybe you just do not have a great eye for drafting interior defensive linemen. So if you're going to use that pick on a defensive tackle anyway, take someone you know who is good. That, that's my pitch to Andrew Barry. Now here is my trade idea. I think if a trade went down, it would look Probably something like this. I don't know if this is actually even enough, but a six round, a third round pick and a six round pick going to Washington might cost a second rounder. You're not going to get a first for Deron Payne. He's not at that level, but maybe a third and a six could get the job done. We'll have to wait and see. Like I said, this is being filmed during our live show or every Thursday at four Eastern. Maybe by the time you're watching this, He's already been traded, and you can laugh in my face for being horribly wrong on my trade projections. But what do you think? Would you make this deal? A for accept or D for decline? I mean, then if, if you make this trade, the Browns have one pick in the first two days of the draft. So it's worth, it's a considerable sum right there, parting ways with a third round pick when you don't have a first rounder. But let me know. Would you make this trade? Now, if a trade does go down, we'll be going live here on the channel most likely. So make sure you are subscribed. I guarantee you're going to want to be a part of that live show when a trade or if a trade happens. So if you have not subscribed already, let's change that. Click onto that subscribe button today. All right, next trade target is Elijah Moore, the New York Jets receiver, who remember did not play a week ago against the Broncos because he requested a trade. Well, he's sort of walked that back a little bit right now. Listen, Ethan Greenberg, who covers the Jets, tweeted this out. I thought you guys should see it. Mike LaFleur, that's not Matt LaFleur, that's Mike, his younger brother with the Jets, said it's a good to have Elijah Moore back in the building with the team. Added, we're all on the same page with everything. Huh. I think I've seen this type of terminology and jargon before with Kadarius Tony, 
who just got traded not long ago. So just because they say, no, he's back and everything's all good, we hugged and kissed and made up, not always the case. So just take it, not the grain of salt, but somewhere in the middle because just because a team says we're having him back and we're happy to have him back, we're going to figure it out, team calls the Jets and they make a compelling offer, they're not going to hold on to him because of what they tweeted out a couple hours ago. Now, Elijah Moore in his career, a former second-round pick, has been pretty productive. He had five touchdowns in his rookie season. That's not too shabby. Last year for the Jets especially, now he has been relegated so far this year. He sits behind Corey Davis and Garrett Wilson and Braxton Berrios in this Jets receiver room. But I think he could be a great addition to the Browns here. So here's my trade idea. Elijah Moore for a fifth round pick. I don't think a fifth is going to get it done. I don't think Barry trades a fourth to get it done, though. So he probably called and says, would you do it for a fifth? No. Well, then we're not interested. That's probably my best guess of how this would go down between the Browns and the Jets. All right, we're going to get to my last trade idea in just a moment. But BetUS, our proud sportsbook partner, has such an awesome deal for you guys. When you go to chatsports.com slash bet and enter promo code BROWNS125, BetUS is going to hook you up with a 125% deposit bonus. You do not want to miss out on this deal, and you don't want to miss out on producer Patrick Seatman, Moneyline underdog for this Sunday. Patrick, give it to us. We're riding with the Giants this week, everybody. Giants money line in Seattle. They're going to get the 7-1. and one. Book it now. Seahawks can't stop the run. Saquon Barkley's going to have a day. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code Browns125. You could be a billionaire if you take the Giants. I think that's what Patrick just said. So make all your picks, whether it's with the G-Men or whoever else. If you're brave enough to bet on the Browns, by all means do so at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Browns125. Third and final trade target is Marquez Callaway. This accomplishes two things in my eyes. One, you get to add another receiver to this room that's really top-heavy with just Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones doing anything so far this year with some fragments of David Bell here and there. And you also get a return man because the Browns have been a revolving door at kick and punt returner this year. Marquez Callaway going back to his days at the fine establishment and educational institution called the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Might have gone there. Marquez Callaway, he did a lot of good things in the return duties there as a special teamer. So he can kind of kill two birds with one stone for Cleveland. He can be a legit wide receiver three, which this team does not have as of right now. Now the downside is it stunts David Bell a little bit. And I want to see David Bell grow, but it's going to take some targets and some snaps away from him. But if Andrew Barry sees this team as we need to make improvements in special teams and Marquez Callaway can come in here and put up some numbers, I mean, look at the stats so far this year for Donovan Peoples-Jones, Elijah Moore, and Marquez Callaway. DPJ, absolutely the leader. The difference is DPJ is wide receiver two on his team. Moore and Callaway cannot say the same thing. Both guys are buried on their respective depth charts, right? Callaway is behind, well, and always hurt Michael Thomas, a Jarvis Landry, a Chris Olave, more we went through earlier. So it is not bad reason to believe more in Callaway with more targets and more snaps could put up numbers like DPJ does. So here's my trade idea for you guys. Marquez Callaway for a six round pick. The Saints love what they have in Olave. They've got Jarvis Landry. They've got Michael Thomas. Yes, those two guys have battled injuries. But if Dennis Allen is looking at his team and they're thinking, we're not going very far this year, we might as well try to think ahead for the future. Adios, Marquez. Enjoy the Guardian City. I could see that maybe happening. So let me know what you think of this trade idea, or you can just let me know oh, what your favorite trade is we went through today. Deron Payne, Elijah Moore, or Marquez Callaway. Just put the number for the trade you liked the most down below in the comment section. I got to go with Deron Payne. I'm hesitant on it because it would involve Andrew Barry having to do something he does not want to do, and that is pay a good amount of money to extend Deron Payne. That's the only reason why you would trade for him is to give him an extension after this year, and I don't really see Barry doing that, but maybe he will accept defeat on his plan at defensive tackle. 
uh, a staple here at the channel growing week after week is Petey's Doghouse. So some guys in my doghouse going back from last week into this week. Backyard only means you trust the dog, but not out on its own. So you just open the sliding door and they can only hang out in the backyard. Not much further than that. That's Jedrick Wills to me. For a guy that's picked in the first round, I have defended him maybe more so than other people would. But at a certain point, I want Jed Wills to look like a left tackle that would get his fifth-year option picked up and be half of Joe Thomas. And I'm not seeing that so far this year. Joe Woods is on the leash. He was in the doghouse. He's now on the leash, which means he'll go outside, but I, I, it's like a short leash, not a retractable leash. You know what I mean? And for that reason is the defense improved against the Ravens. It could have gotten a lot uglier against Lamar Jackson. They limited Lamar big time. So he graduated from doghouse to the leash. In the doghouse, it's John Johnson. The dude preached all about buying in and being invested on and off the field. And then where was that effort during the Ravens game? That's got in my doghouse, no doubt about it.